Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. I have shot this video three times, but I am so rusty that I just don't like how it's coming out. So I'm going to keep shooting it until I like it. Hopefully this is the last one. Um, I haven't shot a video since February, so please forgive me if I am a little rusty, if I do make a mistake, or if I just babble my words a little bit, because you guys know me, I'm not a great talker, I have dad jokes, but I'm better at just drawing and, and teaching than I am actually talking like I am right now. Um, while I'm talking awkwardly, please do me a favor, I have this new board, okay? It's a board of the world, alright? What I want to do is I want to put a pin in every country or every state or any providence that you guys are from, that you're enjoying the video or something is, is you know, working for you, you're learning something, you're happy, whatever. If you're thumbsing it up, throw a comment down there, say I'm from Indonesia or wherever you're from and I'll be able to put my pins on my board and that'll really make me feel good as a teacher knowing that there's such a, you know, big group of people out there in a bunch of different locations that are actually enjoying the content. Um, when, I don't, when I do put up videos and they don't really get much viewage, I, I kind of question, like, should I be doing this? Because, you know, mostly it's for my students, but I already have all the stuff I need for my students. I don't really need any more content. I already have four years worth of content for, you know, four different levels of high school. Um, so we don't, I don't really need that for my students. But when I put it out on the Internet, I'm thinking, like, maybe a lot of people will see it. It'll help a lot of people. And then I can put it on the board for myself. All right. So that's my reward, okay? Um, so anyways, what we're doing here, let me close out since I was already drawing and we'll start again. By the way, it's a good time to drop my Instagram, which is nothing to do with this stuff. There's a couple posts about it, uh, but more it's about my life and, and my wife and my dog and, and all my you know good times in my life so far. I've only had it for like, maybe not so far, but I've only had it for about I don't know, a year maybe, and I, I like it. You know, I get to see all my friends and their kids grow up, and, you know, maybe one day if I have kids, other people will be able to see my kids grow up if they're not, you know, in person with us. Um, so anyways, I am babbling. I don't like talking. Here we go. New. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at our interface, 2022. There's a very important thing that we're doing here for my, my, my man, Joseph. Joseph emailed me, and he said, Dude, is there any way you can help me out? I want to learn how to draw this. I'm in class. My professor doesn't help me very well. I hear that a lot. A lot of the professors out there sound like they just say, here, go figure it out or here, go do it. But they really need to teach this stuff in order for you guys to, to get it and to be able to retain it and use it in other places, you know, without having tutorials like this. All right. So we're going to call this one the castle. I, I just came up with that name. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it is a 3D block that has two views, two orthographic views. There is a top and a front. The front is usually down here on the paper, and the top is usually towards the top, but it's not like that on this paper. I don't know why, okay? Um, so it doesn't really matter. It's just backwards. So anyways, we're going to draw the front view first. Even though I could see myself drawing the top as well, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm 50-50 on which one I want to draw first. So I'm just going to go with what I do normally in my videos, which is to draw the front. Uh, looking at this, these are probably millimeters. I am not going to change my settings for that. I, you know, there's really no point. It's the same thing. As long as you're typing big numbers, it's going to be the amount of units that you're using anyways. So when it's like eight, it doesn't have to be inches. It could be eight anything. Uh, it's just the number of units in the software. All right, so let's go. 350 here is our width. 75 is our height, okay? Going back to AutoCAD, it's important, important, important to know the difference between this left column where it says top, bottom, left, right, front, back, blah, 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 uh, to this cube. The cube only changes the side that you are looking at. So as an example, if I had a 3D box on here, let's just throw anything on the screen here. And I'm going to change this to say conceptual so you can see it shaded in. Uh, I can orbit around this 3D model, right? Just by clicking and dragging on the screen. I can even do that faster though by uh, holding down shift and holding down the scroller on my mouse and I can do the same thing. This way is a little bit better because uh, it doesn't boot you out of the tool that you're in. So let's say I'm in line tool and then I go to orbit a little bit and I let go, I'm still in line. Whereas if I use uh, orbit over here, it does boot you out of that tool, okay? Uh, same exact thing with the pan tool. Pan tool is great, but this one will bump you out of the tool that you're in. If you 
hold down on the scroller, just holding it down, no keys or anything. That'll give you a pan on the screen, and all you got to do is move uh, your cursor for wherever you want to move the screen to. Okay. Um, all right, so let's delete that. Again, this one is going to be what side you want to draw on. Okay, I don't know why I said again. I didn't say that yet. It's only because I shot this video four times already and I'm getting very frustrated. But it's because I'm rusty and I'm trying to do the best I possibly can for you guys. I don't want to just put up a long video where I blah, blah, blah like I am right now. All right, so go back to the front. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the front face first. We are going to go, by the way, green line, F10. That's called polar. It goes 0, 90, 180. 270 back to 360 or zero you can change the increments on that make them every 45 every 30 every one you know whatever you want to do whatever's whatever floats your boat okay but we're going to stay on this zero here and we're going to go to the right and we're going to go 350 enter now that's a really big number which means it's going to go way off screen let's do a zoom extents z enter e enter or double click the scroller same thing or this tool right here is actually all of your different zoom tools. All you got to do is click it once and it will zoom extent. So if I'm way out here and I click zoom extent, it'll bring everything up on the screen. All right. Makes it real easy. I'm going to do a little bit of some intro stuff here because I don't know who's seen the videos and who has not. All right. Um, plus, I'm having my resurgence since February. I hope that's the right word. Resurgence. I don't know. I make things up sometimes. I make words up all the time. My wife always calls me out on that. Um, and then I try to convince her that it's a Scrabble word, but it's not. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going up. We're going to grab the left side of this line with a snap. By the way, snap is F4. Make sure that... Mm, sorry, that's 3DO snap. Uh, snap is F3. Make sure that O snap is on and that you see the end points. If you want to change what is actually snapping to, go to OS enter and make sure you check midpoint. That's an important one. But you might come in here for some other things too, like tangents and, you know, I don't know, uh, intersection if you need it or you don't need it. There's a bunch of different stuff in there. All right. And then hit OK. OK, so I'm going to move this line because it's bugging me that it's near the, the origin there. Um, origin is zero, 00. That's right in the middle right in the dead center. All right, 75 up. We're going to go 25 over, 25 down. Let's just look at the plan for a second. 25 over, 25 down. This is 25, even though it's not marked, because this one's probably 25, since these are both 50. Technically, it could be 30 and 20. It looks like it's even, so I'm going to go with 25, 25. There should be a dimension there. No big deal, though. We forgive whoever made this. 100. We're, we're very forgiving around here on the JamCAD channel. 25 up, 25 over. I'm in rare form tonight. Uh, we want to go 50. We want to go 200. And then we want to close. Okay, now back to the top. Let's change this back to 2D wireframe. We changed to the front because we were drawing the front face. Now we're on the top. Now we're on the top looking down. In the bottom right corner of the cube, we are now going to change our view of the model, not the side that we're drawing on. If this says top right now, and it's the last thing that you clicked, when I change this cube, no matter which way I change it, you're going to be drawing on the top. If I were to change the cube uh, to front, and this still said top, I would still be drawing on the top. If this changes to front, and I start moving all this jib-jab around, then you're always going to be drawing on the front. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of confusing, but you'll get it. Bottom right corner, okay? We got a different 3D view now. Now, here's where it gets real easy. I already have my 3D tools up, but if you don't, go to your gear in the bottom right corner. Uh, hopefully, that's not behind me on the screen right now as I'm shooting this. By the way, if you're liking this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, turn on the bell, say what's up. I don't know. Tell me where you're from, okay? All right, uh, 3D basics is what you want. And you're going to go to extrude and you're going to grab everything with a blue box. By the way, when you go with a blue box, everything that's within the box will get selected. So you'll notice if I move this over, I just lost three lines. They're not highlighted because they're not fully inside of this blue box. If I start on the right side and I move left, that's the green selection box. That will select everything that's inside of it, just like the blue one, but it'll also select things that it is partially touching. So if you look in this area right here, you'll see that those two lines are getting selected because they are being touched, all right? So that's why it's a dotted line around the outside, and that's why this one has a solid line around the outside. Anyways, select everything. I'm going to show you the most common mistake. You're going to go right in to extrude this, and you're going to see all these lines. 
And the reason for that is because you forgot to do the join step. You have to join these lines together to make them a uh, polyline, okay? And once you have that polyline, that's kind of like having a surface. That surface then gets extruded into a 3D model. If you don't do the join, it will not work and it'll be hollow like this, okay? So if you're seeing that, especially if you're one of my students, you know better. All right, 2D wireframe, let's back up a couple steps here. Control Z is to back up, or you can go to the back button up here. Um, let's see, how long is this video so far? Do I have a counter anywhere? I don't, so I have no, no idea. Um, cool, I'm using a new software, so I'm not really sure. Um, anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. Select everything, type join first. You'll see down here it says 10 objects converted to one polyline. That's what we want. If I click on it, one full thing. Um, make sure that you do have only one closed shape. If I had a line here, that would not join correctly because that's two different pieces. If you wanted those to be two different pieces, you would have to then have a join of just these things with that closed and without this stuff. That would be one join. And then you would have a one, two, three, four for this join. And that would be a double line right here. You'd have a line there and then you'd have a line here. Okay. But that's not what we want. So we're going to get that out of there. We want it to be all one piece, select everything. We already typed join. So it won't do anything any further. Take this extrude. What is the depth? Let's take a look. Depth is 150. Okay. So we're going back. If you are, if your cursor is going back, you can do a positive number 150 and it will go in that direction if it's moving forward which i can't do now and you type a positive number it'll go in the forward direction okay so there you go all right first things first super easy here we have fillets or fillet edge i should say because it's for a 3d model on the corners in the front of this model so fillet edge oops fillet oh boy get down to the command line Fillet edge. All right, we're always going to hit radius. I mean, there's other options, but we always hit radius because that's generally what we do in my class. Um, so we got a fillet here. What is the size of that fillet? I'm seeing a radius 50, okay? And then I'm also seeing a center of a circle that's 75 over and 100 in. So we'll do that in a second too. Let's do the fillet edge first. Fillet edge, radius 50. We're gonna click on the edge, on the edge, and then hit enter twice, one, two. One is to register what you're doing, two is to actually set it in stone. All right, so we said, best way to do this, go right to the midpoint, draw this line back 100. You are already in the center of the, the model being extruded backwards, so you're already that 75 in because it was 150 back, um, <clears throat> and now we're 100 back off of the center, that gives us a center for a circle, which is radius 50. So right at the end of this line, radius 150, that is not the number that I just said, sorry. Radius 50, not with a one in front of it, and you get your circle right there, erase your dummy line, hit escape. I don't know why this line is lighting up, sometimes that happens in the software. So you can just do a zoom extent if that ever happens to you. You could also type regen, that regenerates the screen. Uh, this is going to be a drill hole through this top part of the, uh, it's not the top, top part, but it is a top surface of this 3d model. We are going to extrude negative. You could type, you could, uh, have your cursor go up and type a negative number, or you just put your cursor down in this direction and you do 25 enter. Okay. So 25 is going to be deep enough to get through the entire model. But to tell you the truth, it doesn't matter how far you go because you can only subtract this from this material here and there is no material down there to subtract from so you could just go forever it really doesn't matter subtract what do you want to subtract from enter what do you want to subtract enter and you get your hole in your model let's check what it looks like conceptual okay or maybe some shaded with edges i like that one too uh it always looks nice when you print it i'm doing my orbit that's holding shift and clicking down on the scroller once again and you can orbit around and take a look at it if you want to reset your view, go back to the top and then do your bottom right corner again. All right, so we got the castle part to make now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to 2D wireframe. I am going to start with a dummy line. And that dummy line, I, I'm going to move it. I, in my videos, I always say do an offset and then don't forget to erase the original. But I'm just going to move it because that's probably the better way to do it. Stay on the green line, 25, enter. Uh, because now you don't have to go back and erase anything. So I don't know why I never thought of that before, but you know, whatever. All right, so uh, rectangle, if I click here, 
I could have put the other line here and given myself something to snap to, or I could do, um, I don't know if I like dimensions, but let's try this. I thought it was going to be uh, length. <clears throat> That's for a 3D box. It's not for the 2D rectangle. So anyways, this is going to be, uh, let's see if it's 150 deep minus 25 and 25, we get 100. So it's going to be 100 by uh, 25. Okay. And it's going to want to know which direction you want to go. And of course, I type the wrong number first, which is exactly why I don't like doing the rectangle tool. Uh, sorry, with dimensions, because I wanted to do 25 first and then 100. And then I want to flip it that way. Okay. So now I've got this rectangle here. All right. What I'm going to do with that is extrude it. We're going to go down 25. And then I'm going to do, uh, before I do anything, rather than doing this whole work all again, why don't you copy that box, which by the way, you can click it and then hit uh, copy, or you can click it, uh, sorry, or you can hit copy, click it, hit enter, and then now you're in the same position. So from this corner here, the, the top left of this castle block to the top left of that castle block, I just made a copy. And now we can do a subtract from this model, enter, one, to enter what do you want to subtract right so there it is boom model done let's go on uh shaded with edges let's reset our view and if you really did want to print this you'd go up to the a you'd hit print or you can export it as a pdf right and that's pretty much it all right so once again guys help me out i really want to fill this board with a bunch of pins i think it'd be really cool if you guys could just comment and tell me where you're from also you know you could say what's up and, and ask me how i'm doing and all that good stuff i always answer questions you guys can email me and you know if you have any future projects that you want me to work on but other than that i hope you enjoyed the video i'm glad to be back and i'm going to be shooting more videos going forward all right thanks a lot guys i appreciate everything that you guys do every watch that you guys make see you later